though this episode is airing after the election, I'm recording it beforehand with no clue who won. And that's because this isn't about a candidate. It's about a disturbing trend that this election has highlighted. Men, especially within black culture, making monumental decisions like voting for the president based purely on emotions. This tradition of emotional decision making is one we have to break. Men are designed to lead with logic and reason, not impulsive reaction. In this episode, we're unpacking why it's crucial for men to return to a place of leading with clarity and purpose for the sake of our family, communities, and our culture. What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome and welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast. So this week's episode is going to be about something I noticed during the election. Uh, I noticed it on social media. I noticed it within conversations. A lot of men are choosing a presidential candidate with emotions. That's problematic. That's problematic because it has a lot of layers within something that we need to break away from, especially within Black culture. Logical reasoning usually trumps emotional reasoning, right? I usually don't do this on the podcast. I usually do it on a live stream. So for those who watch the live stream, you know what I'm about to do. When we talk about emotional, we always hit y'all with this. So that's what a lot of men are looking like when they discuss politics. There's no real logical reason why they choose a presidential candidate. Now, like I said, this is not all men, but it's a, a good number of men, right? that I came across, that I've seen, like I said, in real life, maybe at a cigar spot, maybe at a restaurant, maybe at the bar, maybe on the plane, maybe at the airport, anywhere, right? That gave me illogical reasons on why they voting a certain way. Emotional reasons. And I'm like, these presidential candidates, whether it's Trump, Harris, Stein, West, all gave you bullet points on why or what they're running on. And you can't even parrot back any bullet point that these presidential people are running on or maybe something that you oppose. But instead, you give me illogical reasons. Instead, you give me emotional reasons. That's an issue. That's an issue because those emotional reactions, those emotional thinking, those emotional movements usually end up with real world consequences usually end up with real world consequences. And I think we really have to discuss this and we really need to speak about this. But before we speak about this, I wanted to say a disclaimer, right? I am recording this episode prior to the election. I'm recording prior to the election, but I am releasing it after the election because I want you guys to understand this is not about the election. So if you guys clicked on this and saying like, oh, he about to get on Harris. Oh, he about to get on Trump. Oh, he about to be pro Harris. Oh, he about no, I'm not being neither one. Not gonna be neither one. So I want you guys to understand that, right? I want you guys to understand that. I want you, I want you guys to understand that this, uh, this episode is about the steps that men are taking to be emotional. And we need to break away from it. Now, voting for a president is an emotional process. I'll give you that, right? It's an emotional process. However, the emotions got to be left at the door when it's time to make a choice. And let me give you guys some examples of emotional driven voting that I've seen, right? And now it's crazy because I see emotional driven voting, pro-Harris, anti-Harris, pro-Trump, anti-Trump. I see it four different ways. One thing I see emotionally driven uh, with black men Pro-Trump saying that, oh, they try to lock him up, so we got to vote for him. What does that even mean? So you're attached to prison culture is the reason why you want to vote for a president? How crazy is that? How crazy is that, right? Or somebody saying something like, I guess this is anti-Harris. Oh, she slept with Montel Williams. <laughs> now, I can't confirm or deny it. I don't know. They, they just had a moment together. I don't know what they did with each other. But you slept with a TV talk show host back in what? I don't know. Maybe late 90s, early 2000s. What does that have to do with anything right now? 
that had nothing to do with Trump policies or Harris policies or Stein or West. Nothing. But that's how you make your decision. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, people who are pro-Harris, anti-Trump, right? It killed me seeing grown men saying, yo, I want to vote to see a woman president. Nothing to do with her policies. Nothing to do with what she's running on. Nothing to do with what Trump is running on. Or Stein or West, right? Can't forget those. Nothing to do with that. You just want to see a woman president. I mean, you could vote for Jill Stein if you want to see a woman president. Maybe she got better policies, but you're going off of that emotion of you want to make history. What? What, what, what has to do with anything? Another thing I see, right? And I saw this on a church. This killed me. I ain't gonna lie. This killed me. Um, a pastor named Michael Jordan, right? Not the same Michael Jordan from the Bulls, the Wizards, Space Jam, golf, um, the Hornets, right? Not that Michael Jordan. A pastor named Michael Jordan. This pastor, Michael Jordan, had this billboard at his church. I want to get a message to African Americans and poor whites that we have a very serious election coming up. That's why he decided to post these eye-catching mottos outside his house of worship before next Tuesday. This side suggests a black vote for Donald Trump could lead to a form of slavery. If Donald Trump can control what we study and read or control our wages, we'll be substandard to him. Word of Jordan's political messaging reached Montgomery. On social media, Republican Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth said Jordan should be trying to spread the gospel, not threaten, intimidate, and insult those who exercise their right to vote and support the candidate that is best for them. Those responsible for this sign should be ashamed. But he's thinking from a, 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 a Republican point of view. Donald Trump make sad, pitiful, negative statements about people every day. But Jordan's political points don't stop with cotton-picking threats. He hurls serious insults at any African-Americans aligning themselves with a former president. Are you worried at all that when you use words like ignorant, stupid, Negro, as it says in your son, you may offend people that may want to come to your church? No, um, they know point blank. It's an ear catcher. Right, and before we continue with the content, man, make sure you guys hit the like button and follow Broken Traditions wherever you find this content at. Also, I want to give a special shout out to the Broken Tradition channel members. It, the Tradition Breakers. We got some new people who join the Tradition Breakers. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining, helping me out, helping keep the lights on for Broken Traditions. We're going to have an exclusive uh, podcast recording, right? So what we do here is we have online podcast recordings when I have special guests on. So you guys get to see the behind the scenes and see, you know, we have these great conversations with other content creators and you guys also have input in the comments. That's for channel members only. So if you guys want to join the Tradition Breakers, Hit the link in the show notes, and after that, you could become a channel member and get the exclusive content when we have other people come on. All right, let's continue on with this episode. If you guys vote for Trump, you're going to go back to pick your cotton. How you a man of God and you lying like that? Because we lived four years under Trump. And I live in Georgia. And I go to South Georgia. And I see cotton fields. Right, driving down to Albany, driving to Warner Robins, you know, what have you see cotton fields. My whole time in Georgia, right? I was in Georgia under <laughs> under Trump, and I was in Georgia under Biden. I have not seen one person in a cotton field. But this man wanna put on his church billboard, you're going to be going back to picking cotton if Trump is elected. You're trying to plan emotions. Trying to plan emotions because, you know, within black culture, picking cotton is an emotional um, experience, right? It's an emotional experience that our ancestors went through. And you're trying to use that same emotional experience to get people to vote a certain way at your church. Like I said, to see a man of God lying to that capacity is wild crazy to me. Wild crazy. Wild crazy to me to see something like that. But seeing men making critical decisions like that, right? Based on feelings or biases 
We're letting our emotions take the lead. And that's not what leadership looks like. We always talk about, yo, I need a woman that wanna just, I can lead. You know, she gotta take my lead. How you, how a woman gonna take your lead and your lead is emotionally, emotionally driven. Your lead is, I'm voting for Kamala because she's a woman. How could she take you serious? Your lead is, I'm not, I voted for Trump because Kamala slept with Montel Williams. How could she take your lead if you're saying, I voted for Trump because he went to, he got a mugshot. Trump's a real one. That, that's how we asking our women to follow our lead. Trump went to jail, he's a real one. Kamala's a woman, I'm voting for her. I, don't, I just want to see history. You're making real world decisions based on something so minor. That's not what leadership look like. That's not what look like at all. And the reason why I want to discuss emotionally driven choices or just like how I notice a lot of men, a good number of men are leading with emotions, choosing a president. The reason I want to speak about that is because leading with emotions come with real world consequences, real world consequences. And these real world consequences are issues within black culture. They are issues within black culture. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of couple of issues, right? Um, financial instability. You in a club, <laughs> you see somebody popping bottles. You don't know that person's pocket, but you don't want that person to outshine you. So you get emotional because the girls you with is looking at the bottles and the sparkles and the signs and whatever coming. Now you need to get some bottles. So now. You're looking at your Chase app or your Bank of America app, whatever app you're looking at. You're looking at your app. You know your funds ain't there, but you want to put in your credit card and you spend 10 grand for a night just to have a certain look because you got emotional. Now you in debt for one night because you need to pop bottles because some scammers and drug dealers are popping bottles across the way and your girl was looking that way. She still went home with you. <laughs> Y'all still had a good time, but you didn't like her looking that way. You got emotional. You got emotional. Poor financial decisions come from emotions, not from sound judgment. And I can speak on it because I've made poor financial decisions. I haven't spent 10 grand at a club, but I've made poor financial de decisions. Fixing them now, but I made it. Another one, right? Leading with emotions. Poor relationship decisions poor relationship decisions because you know you got a girl at home you in the club some girl in your face have sex with her have a baby now either your girl will kick you out or you going to stay with your girl but now you created a single mom so say your girl had a baby now you got another baby because y'all was in a club together either way there's going to be a child without a father in the home. We always talk about, damn, yo, where, 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 the, where the father's at? Why is always single father or single mothers? It could be an emotional decision from a dude knowing that he should not do what he's about to do, do it, and end up in a situation like that. Now, you got a broken home for no reason. For no reason at all. Because of an emotional decision. And let's take it to the last one I want to talk about, about how emotional decisions impact black culture. In a lot of cases, emotional decisions, whether it's somebody giving a mean mug, somebody uh, felt like they got disrespected, somebody's sneaker got stepped on, somebody um, girl got looked at, Maybe some guy like, damn, she looked good and just looked at her. If a guy is leading with emotions, what is usually the outcome? The outcome is either incarceration, murder, or violence. I'll take a bet. I'll say about 85% of the prison population is in prison because of emotional-based decisions, not being logical. I'll say 85%. And I might be lowballing. And it's crazy because they have to sit on that for X amount of years. What you in here for? Man, this dude disrespected me. What you in here for? Man, 
a shopping cart roll down with somebody putting their groceries away, hit my bumper, and I'm into a fight. Now I got a whole charge. Or uh, somebody putting their groceries away, rolled down, hit my bumper. No damage to the car. And somebody backed out a gun and just shot him. Bop, bop. Now he's dead. Can't leave like that. It's real world consequences when you leave like that. And those real world consequences have impact on our culture and our community. And the reason why I want to talk about the election, because we've seen it in real time. We've seen a whole church tell black people, if you vote for this man who was already president, you're going to back, you're going back to picket cotton. How crazy is that? Think about it. Most men and women in jail did not get there because they used logic. They ended up there because they let their emotions drive their decisions. Speak to anybody in jail that did the crime. I bet you 9.5 out of 10 said that it was my emotions. It was my emotions that led to me getting to where I'm at right now. It's real world consequences. Before we continue on, make sure you join the Broken Traditions Book Club. Broken Traditions Book Club. We are learning about black culture within black culture, online meetings every two weeks, rereading great books. The first book that we're gonna read is the one behind me right here, uh, American Sirens. This book is about the first paramedics in America who are black men, not the first black paramedics, the first men who were paramedics. This is great history. I wanna read books that give us a sense of pride. Are you guys interested in joining the Broken Traditions Book Club? It's free to join. See the barcode, scan the barcode, or hit the link in the show notes. All right, let's continue on. And I'm gonna give you a, a example, right? I'm gonna give you an example of how leading with logic looked like leadership in the real world, especially when it comes to voting, right? So my wife did something that she saw me do. When I voted for the last election, she saw me look up each candidate and say, all right, candidate A, candidate B, these are their policies. I don't care about the R or the D. I'm going by which one is more logical for my life. And I did that all for each um, for each thing to vote on a ballot. I did that for each thing. I did that for whatever they're trying to push. I did it for that. I walked out of there feeling good. Because that was the first time I ever did that. And now, this go around, she did the same thing. You see how it is when you a man that lead with logic? How it could just fall down and trickle down? Trickle down effect? You see how that works? And now, she could go out in the world and tell people like, yeah, you know what? This candidate I voted for, or if she want to speak about it, right? She probably don't want to speak about it, but if she do speak about it, she could give you sound, logical reasons on why she want to vote for somebody or why she voted for somebody. Not scare tactics, not goofy-ass rumors or biases or, you know, things they push down the media. She's not going by that. She's going by what each candidate represents and how to vote for that person. But she seen me do it. That's leading by example. That's leading with logic. That worked out. You see how that works? Men often want their partners to follow their lead. But how can we expect anyone to follow if we're not leading with strength? The reason why I'm honing in on this is because if you meet a man that's logical and have sound judgment and have a conversation, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like, damn, okay. I can see where this brother's going. I can see why he think like this. I can see how this is. And to see how that trickled down, that is, that's that's the direction I would love to see the culture going. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that for twofold, within Black culture and within American culture. Let's get back to logical thinking. Let's lead with logical thinking. You know those conversations y'all have. You be like, yo, this, this brother got sense. Yo, he got some sense. Okay, I could, do, I could rock with this. You know those conversations. You know those conversations... You know how those conversations feel when you meet somebody with logic, unless you're an emotional person. Then you get upset and <laughs> you don't have a sound argument. All you want to do is just lead with anger. Like, man, you're just saying that because of this. Man, you start calling people names. You're like, man, I can't agree with you. You a coon. Man, I can't agree with you. You a bootlicker. Man, I can't agree with you. You the white man's puppet. 
because we're just having a logical conversation. Off topic, on topic. I think I see Maxie Waters had a dis disagreement with somebody and she just called him racist. <laughs> what you gonna say now? Like, oh, you racist. You can't even fight back with that. We have to get back to the logic because the emotions have their consequences that is destroying black culture. That is what we need to get back to. We need to get back to logical conversations, not getting upset when somebody disagree with us, calling them names. <sighs> so let me know how you feel about this in the comments, man. I appreciate you guys. I think this is a great conversation. I think it's a conversation I need to be had it. Um, can't be leading with the emotions. Can't lead with the emotions. Somebody have to be logical. Somebody have to be logical. And in my opinion, it need to be the men. It was too many men out here running on who they want to support based on emotions. That's not a good look. Appreciate y'all. All right, man. Till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. All right, later. One.